Hey guys, it's Brie here at Blossom and Branch Farm, and today I am working on an experiment to try to further eliminate plastic from my gardening practice and also to try to give you some more affordable options if you're also trying to cut back on plastic use. If you've been here for more than five minutes, you know that I love soil blocking. We talk a lot about soil blocking, and the reason that I love soil blocking is because we don't have to buy a lot of plastic seed trays. I use fiberglass trays that are flat bottomed and I use my metal soil blocker and that's all the materials that I need. But if you're not buying in bulk, the fiberglass trays can be expensive. So it can be cost prohibitive, especially if you're trying to grow a lot. So that led us to looking into a more old fashioned way of starting seeds, which is just these basic wood trays. Now I had my loving, lovely husband, Dave, help me construct these. And by help me, I mean, he did it and I videoed him. <laughs> but what we've used here is untreated cedar. And we're using cedar because cedar holds up the best to things like rot. So because there's gonna be wet soil sitting in here, we are being realistic that the life expectancy of these trays is not gonna be as long. So we just know that going in. But we also know that at the end of life, these guys are going to be compostable, completely be able to return to the earth with no issues. So we use one by sixes to make the bottom and I made these as wide as my wire baking shelves that I use to start seeds on. So we just use a wire rack and I made these the same dimensions so I can fit two on each shelf. So they are 24 long by just under 18 inches across. And then they have a side, the sides are constructed with one by four cedar pieces and the bottom is one by eight. So all you need is one one by four and one one by eight to make one of these boxes and then we use some of the scrap pieces just to screw on some handles here you could use a nail gun if you wanted to make this faster we just use screws now there are obviously some issues with starting seeds in wood trays like this one is drainage so if you're starting your seeds inside you're going to want to put something underneath these trays to catch the water so you could use something like a metal cookie sheet but then you'd have to change the dimensions of this wood tray so that it would fit inside a cookie sheet you could also probably just use something as basic as a tarp underneath just to collect any water that might fall but it does present a problem when we're looking at doing things like soil blocking for example because if we're soil blocking usually we're bottom water to help keep the soil blocks from falling apart. But with wood, that's gonna be significantly more difficult, especially considering that this wood is not exactly watertight. There are cracks in the bottom. So these are all things I don't have the answers to right now. It's gonna be an ongoing experiment and we'll update you with how this is going. But for now, what I'm gonna start with is I'm going to line these to try to help mitigate this moisture issue and also to give the plants a little bit of extra nutrition. You've heard that we've talked about wool, using wool in the past, and you can see behind me, I have two very woolly friends that give us wool every spring. So I have a fair amount of wool to use. So I'm going to use that wool to line the bottom of my seed starting tray, just to try to help with moisture wicking and things kind of spilling out the bottom of these trays. I've also seen people use things like wicking mats, so capillary mats, felt, for example, would work, which is just wool. Uh, but I would use an undyed, untreated felt and make sure it hasn't been mixed with things like polyester. You would, don't want artificial fibers. You don't want polyester in there because that's plastic fibers. So if you're going to line the bottom of your pan like this, I'm just going to use raw, untreated wool. You could use that. If you can't find that, you could use burlap. You could use felt. But we are going to go ahead and line the bottom. And I'm using Midnight's wool because I like to save Roosevelt's wool for doing crafts with because I can dye the white sheep wool different colors and I'm going to mostly be looking for the seconds here so seconds are kind of the unusable bits of wool the pieces that are too short for doing felting or for spinning with or pieces that have kind of manure and things stuck in there so now I could also card this wool which is where you take wool carders and you pass it back and forth and that creates a nice thin layer like in felt but I'm trying to make this kind of simple. So I'm just gonna fill in here with some wool on the bottom. I also don't wanna use too much because that would make this really cost prohibitive. So I'm just gonna try to do like thin, kind of pull it apart, separate it by hand, like I'm carding it, but by hand, and just do a fine line on the bottom. And wool also has 
some great moisture retention properties and nitrogen, nice slow release nitrogen. And after you work with wool, your hands are always nice and soft, especially raw wool because this has lanolin in it. It's very moisturizing. So again, this makes sense for me because I have sheep. If you don't have sheep, you might consider just doing something like felt or burlap here in the bottom. And actually, if you're using felt or burlap, you can run it extra length up and over the edge and down, and then it can sit in a little reservoir of water here, and then that serves as a capillary mat. But I just don't really want constant moisture sitting on this because again, we're concerned about rot. But Maybe I'm being silly for worrying about that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line one of these with wool and the other one I'm going to not line with wool and we'll do a compare and contrast. Now that I have my seed tray totally lined with my wool, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with soil. So normally when I'm soil blocking, I sift my potting soil. I use this Coco Loco by Fox Farms. And no, they don't sponsor me. I have never seen a scent from Fox Farms or even a free bag of soil. So before you go saying that, it's just not the case. I use this one because it's peat free. So I don't like to use peat in the garden. And quite frankly, there are not a lot of peat free potting soil options. I've tried Beyond Pea, that one failed miserably for me. I've tried several other of the options available on the market and none of them have ever worked as well as this one. So while I would typically sift this if I was going to be making soil blocks, I'm not going to sift it today. I'm just gonna add it directly to my tray and then moisten it down. I sift it usually to remove the bigger chunks, but because I'm not worried about those chunks getting caught in a soil blocker, I'm not gonna do it today. Now, as this moistens, it's gonna compress, so I'm gonna fill it pretty much to the top. Now, if I find that this method is successful, then I would recommend if you're growing a lot of seeds, if you're market farming, for example, like we do, then you might make a custom dibbler that fits this tray with little wooden dowels in it that you can just push down and make all your dibbles for your seeds all at one time. But as it is, because I'm just doing this experimentally, I'm just gonna use my finger to make my dibbles. I will say that filling this was very quick. <laughs> this was very easy. But now what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna make a little divider with my putty knife. So my little scraper, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna make little dividers so that I can have a grid pattern in here. But I think it would be smartest to wet this first. Okay, of course my nice sprinkly water, watering can is broken. So I'm just gonna do this by hand, but ideally you're using one of those watering cans that spreads the water out as you put it on, or like a hose sprayer. Or you can just do it this way like I do. But I am gonna get it fairly moist, borderline soaking. So you definitely wanna do this outside. I'm just always out here making mud pies. I feel like soil blocking is making mud pies too, and it's just brings out something in me that is just, it's just fun and childlike. There's something just about playing in the dirt and doing this, especially in the middle of winter, just getting your hands in the soil that feels so good. Okay, so I've got my soil container all filled up here. So I'm just gonna level it so it's kind of the same. I'm starting some seeds in a big tray. I'm gonna press it down a little bit, not too much, but a bit. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm gonna make a grid pattern of about the size that I'm going to make my little seed blocks. So we're just gonna grid this off. I'm gonna eyeball it. <laughs> this is just a putty knife that I'm using here to do this. This is a very satisfying feeling. This is nothing revolutionary. People have been starting seeds in wooden trays like this for a long time. Now the question is gonna be, you know, are they gonna hold this shape? I know when I use my soil blocker that they hold their shape. I've never done this way, but what I'm trying to avoid is that all of the roots start growing together. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that the roots still can be easily separated. Now, obviously they're gonna crumble a little bit when we take them out, but what I'm anticipating doing when it's time to transplant is just scooping them up with a spoon and then transplanting them similar to the way that we would a soil block. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna say, it's definitely important to make sure that your soil is 
moist if you're going to do these little dividers. Now, not everyone does this. Some people just put their seeds in. They don't bother gritting it off like this. That's fine too. It's just if you have plants that are sensitive to root disturbance and they start growing into each other, that can be a little bit tough on them once it's transplant time. So this is where I think that soil blocks have an advantage is that you're not gonna get as much growing into the next block as I'm going to with these trays, but we'll see if that matters that much. I've definitely had blocks before where I thought that that was gonna be a problem, that they had grown into each other, uh, but they did fine. So, you know, you never know, yeah. but the, yeah, Cora, right? But the the wetter this this soil is, it will hold the grid pattern a little bit better. If it's too dry, it just gets a little crumbly. Now we're gonna make a little hole in the center of each one. So if you want, Cora, you can do those ones over there. You're just gonna take your little finger and just push a little, just a little dibble. Mm -hmm. Yep, not too deep, perfect. It's a big rock. So a couple things that I observed as I was doing that, make sure that you firm down the soil like I mentioned because that's gonna help these hold the shape, make sure they're nice and moist. And especially around the edges, it I noticed they didn't compress it as well and there it got a little bit crumbly. So we're gonna go ahead and seed these. Cut down Cut. through the stuff. And I've got my helper here. We're gonna do another tray without the wool on the bottom and then we'll compare how they do after a growing period. What do you think, Cor? Okay. Can we put my sweater on? Um, sure. Oh, okay, you'll wear my sweater but not your own sweater. So for humidity dome here, we have a couple options. We could use something like... Like... So occasionally I will use, use fabric that, fabric so I just take cotton fabric and I cover it with beeswax pastilles. I put it on some foil and I put it in the oven at about 220 degrees for about 10 minutes and they melt. And you could use that <laughs> as a humidity dome if you wanna go plastic free. I'm just actually gonna use another piece of wood to put on top of this. You could also use burlap. I just find that burlap is really hard to keep moist. It dries out pretty quickly, but we do wanna still use some kind of humidity dome. So you could either use wood or you could use that beeswax coated fabric. You have anything to add, Cora? So maybe if you put like seeds in the holes and bury it up, they might grow. That's exactly what we're hoping is gonna happen, Cora. All right, I'm gonna go get the other tray and we're gonna fill up the other one with just the dirt and yep. no wool. Ooh, these handles come in handy. I will say this is heavy. So if you want to do this on a smaller scale, I would advise for that. Maybe these are a little bit big. Ooh, okay. Stay there, Cora, I'll be right back. Come on over here. Okay, so this one will be a little less work. All right, we've got our, add, our water all added to this batch without the wool. I'm gonna make sure it's evenly wet. I'm actually gonna use my hands. I think it seems like my hand works better. This. It's always better to use your hands in the dirt, right, Cora? Yeah. <clears throat> Mom? Yeah? If I grow up and you're still alive, I would let you live in my house. That's so sweet, honey. Thank you. I hope I'm still alive when you grow up, too. Because I love you, and you love me. I do love you. That's why we do all of this this is why mama works so hard to make sure that everything that we do is good for the planet because it's what I'm leaving you. And if I don't take care of the planet for you, then who will? So I'm definitely getting a little better separation on these ones just because I wetted the soil down more. Even as we water these, I'm not sure that they're gonna necessarily hold their shape anyway. Because again, we normally bottom water and I don't think that's gonna work with the trays, these trays. <coughs> I don't know, we still have some fine tuning to do. 
Okay, so because it is so early in the season and I don't really wanna waste all of this soil, I am going to seed start something that I might actually be able to bring through and plant. So last time I did a trial like this, I actually did zinnias and radish and it was so early because I was just testing the soil that I wasn't able to plant them out, which is kind of a waste. And so now I it is almost the last week of January. So I am seed starting stock. And stock is a flower that is very cold tolerant. It's actually in the brassica family. And it is frost tolerant. And so we usually plant them out quite early. In fact, I think last year I planted them out in March. And we had blooms in June. So you can also seed start them, we found, in June for fall blooms. But they don't like to be growing in midsummer. They don't like the heat. So these are some that hopefully we'll actually be able to plan out and see how they do during the season. I'm doing two per cell because these are a little bit older seed. Stock typically has a pretty good germination rate around 90%, but I want this experiment to be successful. So I am overseeding these a little bit just to make sure that we get germination. As I've been doing some more study here, this winter on soil, I've been learning lots of interesting things about bacteria and how they affect the germination of seeds. So for example, different seeds have different microbiomes, just like we have different microbiomes in our bodies based on what we eat. Seeds have them kind of based on what they need to help them germinate. And so there's actually a theory that the reason why older seeds don't germinate actually isn't because of the seed being old, it's because the bacteria on the seed that helps the seed to germinate is old. So I found that really interesting. I know some of you like these little tidbits. But anyway, I'm doing two per cell just in the hopes that we get full germination on all of these seedlings and we'll have a really nice thorough experiment here to see how these do. So I'll be updating you guys in about four, five weeks with how these are doing. Again, we have not sifted this soil. It, you know, if you wanted to sift this, you definitely could because there are some larger chunks in the Coco Loco of rocks and twigs and things. This is all experimental. I'm not telling you guys to go out and do this. Although there are people who are seed starting in wood trays very successfully. If you have any that you follow, please feel free to tag them below so that we can keep up with how they do it and how it's going for them. Isn't it funny how 100 years ago, people would seed start and they didn't have plastic. It wasn't an option. And, and yet they could still start seeds successfully and garden and grow things. But doing this with wood feels so foreign to me even though I haven't used plastic trays for a long time and I've used soil blockers for years, it's still, this feels very foreign. So it's going to be interesting. I will keep you guys up to date on exactly how it goes and I'll give you all the pros and cons. Uh, one thing I will say is this one we didn't put handles on and I definitely would advise putting those handles on because they're greatly helpful. All right, guys, that's it for today here at the farm. We're going to go inside and warm up a little bit, right, Cor? Thanks for watching, buddies. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys around here next time at the farm. Buddies. We're buddies, right? Yeah. Best. But we don't have butts. <laughs> Thanks for helping.